44. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So they give us this balanced equation, CS2 gas yields CS2 liquid. So it looks like we are condensing, right? We're going from a gas to a liquid, and we're doing that at 90 degrees Celsius. So from that temperature, we have to find out the equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is capital K. Now, there's so many Ks, right? There's Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd is a thing. Ke, not really, but Eq is. Kf, uh, I've lost the alphabet here, right? But you get the point. There's so many different Ks, right? Chances are we're finding a Kp value because there are gases here, right? And gases always are linked with the pressure. But it doesn't matter because there's only one equilibrium constant, a K value formula that deals with temperature. And that's this one down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this up. Okay. So now K equals the E button on the calculator. That's all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times temperature. Let's see what we could plug in. Now they didn't give us an R value, but that's okay. Because the R value is a constant number. It's 8.314. We use this value when we're dealing with energies. And delta G is an energy value. It's Gibbs free energy. 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. These units will help you out as to what units are allowed in this formula. So for example, Kelvin is only allowed, but they gave it to me in Celsius. So the first thing I have to do is I just have to convert the 90 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. Celsius to Kelvin plus 273. More specifically, you could say plus 273.15, which is what I'll do. So 90 plus 273.15 is 363.15, and that's Kelvin. Okay, we're almost there, or so it seems. <laughs> Delta G is the last variable that we need, but they didn't give it to us, right? And some of you might be saying, okay, right, Delta G, there's a notch here that means standard, so I can go on the back of the textbook, get the Delta G, for this, get the delta G for this, products minus reactants, plug it in, solve, and be happy, right? But unfortunately, if you're using those textbook values for delta G, it's got to be at one temperature, and that's at room temp, 25 degrees Celsius. Aye, 90 degrees Celsius, we're a little bit higher, so the delta G is going to be off. We need to find that delta G value. So I had to think of other formulas that will link delta G with the temperature. And that's this formula down here. Delta G equals this, the delta H, the enthalpy for the reaction, minus whatever temperature you're given, times the entropy of the reaction, delta S. So here's my temperature, here's my delta G, but the thing is, is that I don't know what these values are. That's where we have to go in the back of the textbook. So that's exactly what I did. I went in the back of the textbook to find out what those H values are, and the S values for the individual substances. And from there, we can find out what's the whole delta H for the reaction, what's the whole delta S for the reaction, and then we can use this formula. So first, let's find out what the entire delta H is for the reaction, right? What's that formula if we're using appendix values? Well, it's this right here. All right, delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the sum, that's this little symbol here, so I have to add, add up all my products minus the sum of all my reactants. Let me just bring that down a little bit. Now, are these values going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, it depends on how many you got in your balanced equation. I only have one CS2 on either side. So, for good practice, that's the number that you multiply by the values that you have. So this would technically be 1, and this would technically be 1. You would sum up the sides, but you only have one substance on each side, so you don't even have to sum them up. And 1 times any number is its same. So the sum would be the exact same values, 89.70. So from here, I could just go in and say, okay, delta H for the whole entire reaction would be the products, which is 89.70 minus the reactants, which is 116.9. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals 
89.7 minus 116.9. 116 and I get exothermic, it's a negative value, negative 27.2 units. Back of the book says kilojoules per mole, but since I'm multiplying by your coefficients, those are your moles, the moles cancel. So you're just left with kilojoules. Okay, now we have to do the same process again to find out the delta S's. So same formula, this one right here, but instead of using H's, I can just say, hey, I can make another formula. Instead of H's, I'm going to use S's. So the whole delta S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of all the products, delta S, minus the sum of all the reactants, right, delta S. So you do the same exact thing. Just for good practice, you take the values, times them by the coefficients. In this case, they're both ones. You don't have to add here because there's only one substance. So the totals would be the same, 238.0 and 151.34. So delta S for the whole reaction would be the sum of the products, 151.34 minus the sum of the reactants, which is 238.0. Delta S for your reaction is 151.34 minus 238. And it's not a favorable entropy, it's negative, negative 86.66 units, joules per mole times Kelvin, but since we multiplied by those moles, moles go bye-bye, so it's just joules per Kelvin. Okay. Now I have the whole delta H, check. I have the entropy, check. I have the temperature, check. Let's solve for that delta G. We're getting there. So I'm just gonna pull this out, I'm gonna get rid of this. And now let's go for it. Delta G equals, now check before you plug in. The units have to match. Delta H values are in kilojoules. Delta S values are in joules. Uh-oh, we need the same unit for energy. Now, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna convert to joules or kilojoules? Ultimately, go back to the formula. Remember, the R value dictates what's going on in that formula, and the R value said, I need it in joules. So this delta G value has to be in joules. So I'll take my kilojoules, and I'll just convert it into joules. Kilojoules to joules times by 1,000. Similarly, just take the decimal, move it over to the right three times. So this would essentially be negative 272 with two zeros. So negative 27,200. And that's the value that's going in for delta H. Negative 27,200 minus the temperature in Kelvin, which was 363.15. It's the one that we already converted. And then I times by my delta S value which was negative 86.66. Plug this all into the calculator at once. The calculator will understand what's going on. So negative 272.00 minus 363.15. And I'm just double checking that I'm plugging in the correct numbers times by the delta S. I'm just gonna pull that number down. And there we go, non-spontaneous, okay because it's a positive, 4,270.579. Notice how I did not round, because that's not the final answer. The K value is the rounding number, right? The one that you're trying to solve for. So this will be in joules. And now we finally have the link to get to this formula. The delta G is going to be 4,270 purposeful rhyming, or is it on purpose? I don't know. 0.579, and that's joules. Let's plug it all in. Equilibrium constant equals the E value raised to the negative fraction. We got a positive delta G on the top, right? Make that illustrator, there we go. Positive delta G on top, 4270.579 times by the two values, right? The 8.314. And then the temperature, which was 363.15. Let's just exaggerate that it's being raised. There you go. I would get this value to being just one number. So I could take the E raised to that number. 
So k equals e raised to the, I'm going to say negative, grab the whole delta g value, divided by 8.314. And now since I'm not using parentheses, and I still want to tell the calculator that I want that 363 in the denominator, I'm going to press divided by 363.15. Cool. Lots of decimals. So no rounding, negative 1.4. One, four, four, six, and more numbers. So now just raise the E button to it. K equals E is second LN. That's the E button. Grab the whole number. That's why I love the TI 84. Press enter. And there you go. Uh, maybe saw four sig figs here. So zero point two four three one. No units for the K value. And that's your final answer, right? And it kind of makes sense. If you have a, uh, a non-spontaneous delta G, your K value has to be less than one. And it is. So checks out. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much for viewing the video. Thank you so much for learning from this channel. Um, you, guys, you guys rock, right? Thank you so much. And I really hope you're learning out there. Have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes and tell your friends about the channel. Tell your classmates, just gets the word out there that this channel exists. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.